Very recently, we have, others have found a new paradigm for virus entry, and this is uh, demonstrated by the, the phyloviruses, uh, or a philovirus, whichever your, your choice is. And this is, for example, Ebola virus or uh, Marburg virus. These are thread-like viruses, which of course are very lethal. They don't cause a lot of in infections globally, but when they do, uh, you're not, not in very good shape. So they're characterized by an envelope that has this very unusual thread-like uh, appearance. And the envelope is studded with glycoproteins, GP, you can see here. And of course the GP is what binds the receptor and what gets uh, the virus into the cell. And uh, this is the scheme of phylovirus entry. So again, it's an envelope virus binding to a receptor. We don't actually know what the receptor is uh, on the cell surface. It hasn't been identified yet, but presumably the virus has to bind to something. Uh, here's a schematic of the glycoprotein that would be on the particle. Now you can see here it says macropinocytic uh, uptake. So remember, pinocytosis is what we call cellular drinking. It's a constant process by which the cell is invaginating its plasma membrane and taking up extracellular material. So the idea here, there are markers of, of pinocytic uptake, and so the idea is that these viruses use this pathway, and they probably attach to a receptor and just get taken up into these pinocytic vesicles. Eventually, though, these pinocytic vesicles traffic to late endosomes, so they move into the endocytic pathway, as you can see here. So this Ebola virus is attached to its receptor in the endosome moving into the cell. Now the first thing that happens is the glycoprotein of the virus gets cleaved uh, by a cysteine protease that's in the lumen uh, of the endosome. And this removes this pink cap from the viral glycoprotein and that presumably makes it competent for the subsequent fusion reaction. Because if you leave, um, if you don't cleave this glycoprotein, the virus cannot get into the cell. Once that cleavage occurs, the next thing that happens is the virus binds to a, an endosomal protein called NPC1. So this stands for Neiman-Pick protein 1 because Neiman, people with Neiman-Pick disease have a defect in this protein and they have a problem transporting cholesterol. They tend to accumulate it in deposits uh, in the cell and this leads to uh, neurological problems. So Neiman-Pick uh, fibroblasts are deficient in this uh, receptor and they cannot be infected uh, by Ebola virus. So the virus apparently binds to NPC1 in the endosome. So we haven't seen this yet before. We've talked about binding up on the plasma membrane, but this is the first time now we have two sets of binding, first at the plasma membrane and then a second interaction in the endosome and that binding is thought to trigger fusion so that the viral uh, nucleic acid which is shown here in the cytoplasm can get out of the endosome all right and you have to have cleavage of the glycoprotein in order to have this fusion trigger so the virus can get into the cell with its cap still on if you will but if it's not cleaved it will not fuse with mpc1 so this is really a, a new way of getting in because here we have a fusion receptor in the endosome. So the virus finds it by moving into the endocytic pathway. It binds to it uh, and then gets out into the cytoplasm in that way. So that's, that's really a new thing. It's only been discovered in the past few years. And um, one of the things that helped was having fibroblasts from patients with NPC neiman pick disease, which don't have the protein and they're resistant to infection. Now people with the disease typically die very young, so it doesn't confer any advantage to them in terms of resistance to virus infection. 